everybody, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Maddie, and I usually post bookish related content every single Monday, though last Monday was the first Monday of this entire year, I believe, that I did not post, but I made it up because I post two videos during the week, so go watch those. Anyway, today we are doing my March wrap-up, and if you remember, my February wrap-up, I only had three books, I felt meh about a lot of them, and I had a headache during that video. So it wasn't a very energetic video, and I didn't really have a lot of good things to talk about. But, I read good books in March, I read five books in March, two of which were five stars, two of which were four stars, and one of them was a two star. So I had a really good reading month in March, and I'm excited to film this video. Excited to talk about these books, especially because I got two five stars. So that's freaking amazing. Anyway, uh, let's get into this video, and let me attempt to film a wrap-up. I always struggle with these. So let's see how it goes today. So the first book I ended up finishing in the month of March was The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Nobel. This is a middle grade mystery. It's very fast paced and quick. My granny and I read this together and we both found ourselves flying through the story. It did not take us very long to read this at all and it is very very short as well. But there is so much in here and it's so it's so much fun, and I really, really liked this. I gave this book five stars, and my granny also gave it five stars. This is the first book of 2021 that I gave five stars, and it was the first book I read in March, too. So this book was just great. I loved, like, nearly every... I, I loved every bit. There wasn't one part of this book I don't think I enjoyed. I loved the main character, Emmy. I liked Emmy's friends, and I liked the mystery. I was very intrigued with where it was going to go. Basically, this follows Emmy as she is sent to a boarding school in England. She is trying to figure out what happened to her father and that's why she's like so okay with going to England because that's where her father was originally from. She gets like these mysterious notes and she's trying to figure out what this box with all these like jewels in it and what like what that leads to. She's trying to figure out what the, the Black Hollow Lane mystery is and I, it's just so much fun. She's in this secret society, but nobody in this secret society likes her. I don't know. It was just so, so much fun. And I feel like as a writer, I learned so much about middle grade while reading this. And I don't know if that makes sense, but in my opinion, it does make sense. And I just... I loved this book. My granny and I cannot wait to read these sequels. It's actually going to be our first read of April. So I'm very, very excited to read that. And I would definitely recommend this because it was five stars. I loved every single thing about it. And I, I loved it. I loved it. Okay, and then my granny and I ended up reading not a very good book. We ended up reading The Heroes of Olympus by, no, it's called The Son of Neptune. I'm sorry. I saw, I saw the giant letters. I just... My mind thought, this is a second book in the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan, which is titled The Son of Neptune. This is basically the first book, but so much worse. This, my granny and I both gave this a two star, and I, like, in my review on Goodreads, I said, dude, can just, can Rick Riordan not write a second book in a series? Because this was so, so boring. Why is it so big? Why did it did, did it really, it did not need to be this thick? I'm sorry, it did not. This basically follows Percy, who has no idea who he is and what happened to his memories. The only thing he can remember is Annabeth. Which, yes, that could be cool, except as a reader and people who have read the first book in this series, we already know what happened to Percy and we know why he doesn't have his, me his memories. So, like, that mystery factor that was in the first book with Jason, just, like, it's not, it's not in this book. It also follows Hazel, who uh, lived before, and now she's back again. Then there's also Frank, who's a klutz. And, um, yeah. There's three characters in here. To I, I, I love Percy. I loved Percy in the uh, original series. I really liked reading from him in the first five books of the first series, and I didn't mind reading from him in this book, but I did not like reading from Frank, nor did I like reading from Hazel's point of view. I don't dislike them as characters. I'm actually quite excited to see their dynamic with the other heroes, but I'm just being honest. 
I didn't really like a single thing about this book. I really thought we were going to get something at the end. I really, really thought we were going to get something when it came to the end of the book, but we didn't. We got a fight scene, and it was okay, but also nothing really happened with that fight scene. It was just boring. It was way too big. It did not need to be this thick of a book. Like, I promise you, we would have been fine. And then the point... I was really excited for when uh, Percy and Annabeth get to meet again, but they don't get to meet until the they they don't get to meet until the next book. And so I was like, wow, great! I waited this much of a book to get nothing out of it. It was just so bad and disappointing. And I think I gave Sea of Monsters two stars as well. So maybe Rick Riordan just can't write the first, the second book in a series. I don't know. Uh, this series follows. Heroes, this, I don't know how to describe this because this book is not the same as the first book, but the first book in this series, Percy Jackson. What is Percy Jackson about? It's about a guy named Percy who finds out he's a demigod after his mother gets kidnapped and taken to hell. He has to go on a mission for the gods, otherwise the world is going to basically go to hell along with his mother. That's the, that's the Percy Jackson series in a nutshell. Not a very good nutshell, but a nutshell nonetheless. All right, so the next book I read in March is my second five star. This is a book I read on my own. My granny didn't read it with me, though I think she would have loved this, maybe. Maybe she would have liked it as much as I did. But that is The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I give this five out of five stars. I read it in three freaking days. I picked picked it up at 11 o'clock on like a Monday, right? I read 20 pages of it, but I wanted to read more. So then the next day I read, I ended up reading 100 pages. And then the final day I read the last 200 pages of this book and I just loved it so much. It was so freaking good. From the first sentence of this book, I knew I was going to love the main character, Sage. I don't know what it was. No, I do know what it is. Sage is like literally the best, he's, he, Sage is exactly what I want in a male character, what I want in a main character even, it doesn't have to be a boy, it could be a girl, I don't care, but he was exactly what I wanted, he is a thief, which if you don't know, that is like up my jam, give me a main character who's a killer, a thief, a criminal of any kind or give me a love interest who's a killer or criminal of any kind and I am like you got me by the throat like yes I love you right so he is not only a thief but he has so many good like cocky and sassy remarks and then not only that not only that the best part about him is that he's left-handed and he's left-handed and he makes like snarky remarks about being left-handed and I just I love him he's perfect in every way <sighs> I'm sorry but I love Sage so freaking much uh, and he is literally what made this book for me I think I don't I think I might have enjoyed it with a different main character but Sage is just perfectly written and he's like He's not like a perfect person, but he is perfect in my mind, and I love him. So, let me try and explain what this book is about. I'm not very good at this. So, Sage, the main character, is an orphan. He lives in an orphanage. Wow, what, who would have known? And one day, he ends up coming back to the orphanage, only to find out that a man named Connor has bought him off of the orphanage lady, and is, tra is planning on to train him to take over the throne and act like the king's long lost son. There are four, there are three other boys who are in this competition for the throne and the ones who don't make it die. That's not a spoiler, <laughs> that's shown very early on. Uh, there is so much more to this story. Uh, I liked all the boys. I really, really thought, uh, at the beginning of this, I thought it was going to be a gay romance between Sage and then the boy he hated right off the bat. But I was like, oh, is this haters to lovers? Because I am down with that. It, it's... There's not, honestly, there's no romance in this book, which is something that's weird for me because I love romance, like, a lot. I love romance. I don't know if you know that, but I'm a sucker for some romance. And there's not really any romance in this book. I just realized that. I, I didn't care at all. I love this book. It's fast-paced. It's a quick read. I could not put it down. I love the main character. I love him. I love him. I love him. And I don't really know where the sequel is going to go. I have read the sequel synopsis, and I still 
don't really know where and how it's going to go and how I feel about that, but I am excited to read the sequel. I don't know if I already said this because I had to film this twice, but I did predict how this book would end, and even though I did that, it didn't really, like, ruin any of the enjoyment of reading for this, of reading this book for me. If anything, it made me more excited to see if I was correct, which I was. I am so good. That or it was just a really easy plot twist. I don't know, but I really did love this book. I'm excited for the sequel. It's on my Amazon wish list. Hopefully I will get it for my birthday in October. I just, I, I love this book and Troy did not let me down. Troy let me down with Truly Devious, but he did not let me down with this one. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I gave The False Prince five stars. So we had a five, a two, a five. And then I started reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy, or the Grishaverse trilogy, with my granny. So, uh, this month we read Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. I gave this a four star, which was originally a five. And this was originally a 4.5, but I knocked it down to a four. I am filming this on the 30th, so we actually haven't finished it yet, but... I already know I'm going to be before, and so I don't really know my granny's writing for this yet, but I will put it on the screen right now so you guys can get, so you guys know. My granny gave this a four also, so four for me for this book and my granny, and a four for me on this book and whatever's on the screen for this book for my granny. So, yes, I put these together because I don't really have much to say. I did enjoy them less upon reread, even though I love Nikolai and he's in this book. I just, I don't know, I didn't enjoy them as much as the first time I read them I did. Also, I have become more, like, picky on wit and, like, how I rate books and how, like, how much it takes to get a five star from me. And upon reread, these just didn't do it. And I did enjoy reading this book, even though I've read it before. So it's not like my enjoyment of reading was less. I guess it's just because I'm more picky. Uh, one thing, though, that has not changed, I still hate Mal. My granny doesn't understand why we, as a fandom, collectively dislike Mal. And I, I tried to explain it to her, and I said, I said, you know what, granny, I don't actually know why none of us like Mal. I know there's a few of us that do, but I said, I don't know why we don't like Mal. It might just be because there are two other much better love interests for Alina, uh, but I don't really know why. And upon reread, I still don't know why I hate Mal. I just don't like him. Maybe it's because, I think it might be because the Darkling and Nikolai are so much more developed than the friendship Alina and Mal have. I'm sorry, I don't see the relationship at all. Romantically, I hate it. Anyway, yeah, four stars for each of these. That's how I finished off the month of March. Uh, not a bad finish. They had one rough, we had like a woo, you know, it was like, a, it, it plateaued at the end, so, anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, if you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up, and subscribe down below, because I post videos on this channel usually every Monday, and so, I'll see you guys all this Monday for another video, and hey, do not forget, I am still a freaking bulldozer, bye everybody.